Good day! This is Mythologia Stories, a podcast that reads mythological stories. These stories reflect the different value systems of people from all over the world. But these stories, at the core, are really just fun to read. So relax everyone, smile widely, and let's start our storytelling session. Alright, so the tale is Gawi Gawin of Adasin. Once again, this is a Tinguan tribe, and the tribe lives in Abra, Philippines. In this story, you will still hear the names of Apuni Bulinayan and the names of Apuni Tulao as well as Gawi Gawin. This time, the three characters that we have already met have different roles. So let us continue. Apuni Bulinayan was sick with a headache. And she lay on the mat alone in her house. Suddenly she remembered some fruit that she had heard of but had never seen. And she said to herself, Oh, I wish I had some of the oranges of Gawigawin of Adasin. Now Apuni Bulinayan did not realize that she had spoken aloud. But Apuni Tulao, her husband, lying in the spirit house outside, heard her talking and asked what it was she said. Fearing to tell him the truth lest he should risk his life in trying to get the oranges for her, she said, I wish I had some biu. Biu is another kind of fruit. Apunitulao at once got up and, taking a sack, went out to find some of the fruit for his wife. When he returned with the sack full, she said, Put it on the bamboo hanger above the fire, and when my head is better, I will eat it. So Apunitulao put the fruit on the hanger and returned to the spirit house. But when Apunibalinayan tried to eat it, the fruit made her sick and she threw it away. What is the matter? called Apuni Tulao as he heard her drop the fruit. I merely dropped one, she replied, and returned to her mat. After a while, Apuni Balanayan again said, Oh, I wish I had some of the oranges of Gawigawin of Adasin. And Apuni Tulao heard her from the spirit house inquired, What is that you say? I wish I had some fish eggs, answered his wife, for she did not want him to know the truth. The Napuni Tulao took his net and went to the river, determined to please his wife if possible. When he had caught a nice fish, he opened it with his knife and took out the eggs. Then he spat on the place he had caught, and it was healed, and the fish swam away. Pleased that he was able to gratify his wife's wishes, he hastened home with the eggs, and while his wife was roasting them over the fire, he returned to the spirit house. She tried to eat, but the eggs did not taste good to her, and she threw them down under the house to the dogs. What is the matter? called Apunitulao. Why are the dogs barking? I dropped some of the eggs, replied his wife, and she went back to her mat. By and by, she again said, I wish I had some of the oranges of Gawigawin of Adasin. But when her husband asked what she wished, she replied, I want the deer's liver to eat. So Apunitulao took his dogs to the mountains, where they hunted until they caught a deer. And when he had cut out its liver, his spot on the wound, and it was healed so that the deer ran away. But Apunitulao could not eat the liver any more than she could the fruit or the fish eggs. And when Apunitulao heard the dogs barking, he knew that she had thrown it away. Then he grew suspicious, and changing himself into a centipede, hide in a crock in the floor. And when his wife again wished for some of the oranges, he overheard her. Why did you not tell me the truth, Apunibulnayan? He asked. Because, she replied, no one who has gone to Adasin has ever come back, and I did not want you to risk your life. Never tell us Apunitulao determined to go for the oranges, and he commanded his wife to bring him rice straw. After he had burned it, he put the ashes in the water with which he washed his hair. Then she brought coconut oil and rubbed his hair and fetched a dark clout, a fancy belt and headband, and she baked cakes for him to take on the journey. Apunitulao cut a vine which he planted by the stove and told his wife that if the leaves wilted, she would know that he was dead. Then he took his spear and head axe and started on the long journey. When Apunitulao arrived at the well of a giantess, all the betel nut trees bowed. Then the giantess shouted in all the world, 
trembled. How oh, strange, thought upon it aloud, that all the world shakes when that woman shouts. But he continued in his way without stopping. As he passed the place of the old woman Alukutan, she sent out her little dog and it bit his leg. Do not proceed, said the old woman, for Elak awaits you. If you go on, you will never return to your home. But the Punitulao paid no attention to the old woman, and by and by he came to the home of the lightning. Where are you going? asked the lightning. I am going to get some oranges of Gawi Gawi Nubadasin, replied Apunitulao. Go stand in that high rock that I may see what your sign is, commanded the lightning. So he stood on the high rock, but when the lightning flashed, Apunitulao dodged. Do not go, said the lightning, for you have a bad sign and you will never come back. Still, Apunitulao did not heed. Soon he arrived at the place of Zilit or Loud Thunder, who also asked him, Where are you going, Apunitulao? I am going to get oranges of Gawi Gawi no Badasin, he replied. Then the thunder commanded, Stand on that high stone so that I can see if you have a good sign. He stood on the high stone, and when the thunder made a loud noise, he jumped. Whereupon Silet also advised him not to go on. In spite of all the warnings, Apunitulao continued his journey, and upon coming to the ocean, he used magical power so that when he stepped on his head axe, it sailed away, carrying him far across the sea to the other side. Then after a short walk, he came to a spring where women were deep in water, and he asked what the spring it was. This is the spring of Gawi Gawi Nubodasin, replied the women. And who are you that you dare come here? Without replying, he went on toward the town, but he found that he could not go inside, for it was surrounded by a bank, which reached almost to the sky. While he stood with bowed head, pondering what he should do, the chief of the spiders came up and asked why he was so sorrowful. I am sad, answered the Punitulao. Because I cannot climb up this bank. Then the spider went to the top and spun a thread, and upon this, Apunitulai climbed up into town. Now Gawi Gawin was asleep in his spirit house, and when he awoke and saw Apunitulao sitting near, he was surprised and ran toward his house to get the spare in head axe. But Apunitulao called to him, saying, Good morning, Cassin Gawi Gawin. Do not be angry. I only came to buy some of your oranges for my wife. Then Gawi Gawin took him to the house and brought a whole carabao for him to eat. And he said, If you cannot eat all the carabao, you cannot have the oranges for your wife. Apunitalo grew very sorrowful, for he knew that he could not eat all the meat. But just at that moment, the chief of the ants and flies came to him and inquired what was the trouble. As soon as he was told, the chief called all the ants and flies, and they ate the whole carabao. Apunitulao, greatly relieved, went then to Gawi Gawin and said, I have finished eating the food which you gave me. Gawi Gawin was greatly surprised at this, and leading the way to the place where the oranges grew, he told Apunitulao to climb the tree and get all he wanted. As he was about to ascend the tree, Apunitulao noticed that the branches were sharp knives, so he went as carefully as he could. Never tell us, when he had secured two oranges, he stepped on one of the knives and was caught. He quickly fastened the fruit to his pear, and immediately it flew away straight to his town and into his house. Apunibulinayan was just going down the bamboo ladder out of the house, and hearing something drop on the floor, she went back to look and found the oranges from Adasin. She eagerly ate the fruit, rejoicing that her husband had been able to reach the place where they grew. Then she thought to look at the vine whose leaves were wilted, and she knew that her husband was dead. Soon after this, a son was born to Apunibulanayan, and she called his name Kanag. He grew rapidly, becoming a strong lad, and he was the bravest of all his companions. 
One day while Kanag was playing out in the yard, he spun his top and struck the garbage pot of an old woman, who became very angry and cried, If you were a brave boy, you would get your father whom got Migawin killed. Kanag ran to the house crying and asked his mother what the old woman meant, for he had never heard the story of his father's death. As soon as he learned what had happened, the boy determined to search for his father, and try as she would, his mother could not dissuade him. As he was departing through the gate of the town with despair and head axe, Kanag struck a shield and it sounded like a thousand warriors. How brave that boy is, said the surprised people. He is braver even than his father. When he reached the spring of the giantess, he again struck his shield and shouted so that the whole world trembled. Then the giantess said, I believe that someone is going to fight and he will have success. As soon as Kanag reached the place where the old woman Alukatan lived, she sent her dog after him, but with one blow of his head axe, he cut off the dog's head. Then Alukatan asked where he was going, and when he had told her, she said, Your father is dead, but I believe that I will find him, for you have a good sign. He hurried on and arrived at the place where lightning was, and it asked, Where are you going, little boy? I am going to a dozen to get my father, answered Kanag. Go stand on that high rock, that I may see what your sign is, said the lightning. So he stood on the high rock, and when a bright flash came, he did not move, and the lightning bade him hasten on, as he had a good sign. The thunder, which saw him passing, also called to us where he was going, and it commanded him to stand on the high rock. And when the thunder made a loud noise, Kanag did not move, and it made, bade him go on, as his sign was good. The women of Adasin were at the spring of Gawi Gawi in deeping water, when suddenly they were startled by a great noise. They rose up, expecting to see a thousand warriors coming near, but though they looked all around, they could see nothing but a young boy striking a shield. Good morning, women who are deeping water, said Kanag. Tell Gawi Gawin that he must prepare, for I am coming to fight him. So all the women ran up to the town and told Gawi Gawin that a strange boy was at the spring and he had come to fight. Go and tell him, said Gawi Gawin, that if it is true that he is brave, he will come into the town, if he can. When Kanag reached the high bank outside the town, he jumped like a flutter bird up the bank into the town and went straight to the spirit house of Gawi Gawin. He noticed that the roofs of both the dwelling and the spirit house were of hair, and that around the town were many heads, and he pondered, This is why my father did not return. Gawi Gawin is a brave man, but I will kill him. As soon as Gawi Gawin saw him in the yard, he said, How brave you are, little boy. Why did you come here? I came to get my father, answered Kanag, for you kept him when he came to get oranges for my mother. If you do not give him to me, I will kill you. Gawi Gawin laughed at this brave speech and said, Why? One of my fingers will fight you. You shall never go back to your town, but you shall stay here and be like your father. We shall see, said Kanag. Bring your arms and let us fight here in the yard. Gawi Gawin was beside himself with rage at this bold speech. And he brought his spear in his head axe, which was as big as half the sky. Kanag would not throw first, for he wanted to prove himself brave. So Gawi Gawin took aim and threw his head axe at the boy. Now Kanag used magical power, so that he became an aunt and was not hit by the weapon. Gawi Gawin laughed loudly when he looked around and could not see the boy, for he thought that he had been killed. Soon, however, Kanag reappeared, standing on the head axe. And Gawi Gawin, more furious than ever, threw his spear. Again, Kanog disappeared, and Gawi Gawin was filled with surprise. Then it was Kanog's turn, and the spear was went directly through the body of the giant. He ran quickly and cut off five of the heads, but the six is spared until Gawi Gawin should have shown him his father. As they went about the town together, Kanog found that the skin of his father had been used for the drum head. His hair decorated the house and his head was at the gate of the town while his body was put beneath the house. After he had gathered all the parts of the body together, Kanag used magical power and his father came to life. Who are you? asked Punitulao. 
How long have I slept? I am your son, said Kanag. You were not asleep but dead, and here is Gawi Gawin who kept you. Take my head axe and take his life. So Apunitulaw took the head axe, but when he struck Gawi Gawin, it did not endure him. What is the matter, father? asked Kanag. And taking the weapon, he took Gawi Gawin's life. Then Kanag and his father used magic so that the spears and head axe flew about, eliminating all the people in the town. All the heads and valuable things went to their town and to their home. When Apunipulanayan saw all this come into her house, she ran to look at the vine by the stove, and it was green and looked like a jungle. Then she knew that her son was alive, and she was happy. And when the father and son returned, all the relatives came to their house for a great feast, and all were so happy that the whole world smiled. Thank you for listening to Mythologia Stories, a podcast that reads mythological stories. For more of these stories, please subscribe. Bye!